welcome to Convicted Hearts. I'm Jen Magania, and if you have a convicted heart, you are in the right place. Today I'm here with Vicki with a part two on her son Malcolm's story. Vicki has some updates for us and uh, some information that's going to be very heavy, very deep, so I want everyone to be forewarned. There may be some trigger warnings here, um, so just brace yourself and let's go ahead and support Vicki. Hey Vicki, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. So I hear that you have some information that's come to light and you were able to access some records that you didn't previously have? Yes, uh -huh. it's been um, seven months now since his passing. So um, I did a, a next of kin request and I received a flash drive and on the flash drive was all of their own, all of Ross County own mm -hmm. evidence the night that um, Malcolm passed away. Okay, and real quick, just before we go forward, for anyone that's maybe catching this second interview at first, we are basically letting you guys know that Vicki was informed that her son Malcolm was allegedly unalive in a Ross County jail. Is that correct? That he unalived himself. Good. Okay, so here we go with that. That was the information you were given. And now you've got the flash drive and what is it that you have found so far? So it's all of the written documentation um, and it's also um, actual photos from the crime scene of that night and then autopsy photos as well. And um, first I wanna say I am Malcolm's warrior so the only reason why I've been able to dissect this flash drive is because of that. And because the Lord gave me the strength to do it because I'm looking at photos of my son's unalive body. So, and I've dissected it. So um, uh, I wanna start with, um, I wanna go over the, okay, so the pictures, I actually have, I got the pictures of the actual, um, the sheet and the vent mm -hmm. and um i got them i got them put into photos so uh this is i can actually show them so this is a photo of the uh sheet just laying there and then um, this is where they said the sheet was at. Okay, and, and I'm assuming it's going up to the vent if they're allegedly. Yeah, okay. trying to show, okay, this is one sheet. Okay. This is the other one. And then this struck me as odd as well. Mm -hmm. uh, can, you, can you see what's on that toilet? What it, I can see there's white, items on it. What is that? Those are maxi pads. What? I'm going to show it one more time. Makes sense. I don't, I don't know. It don't make no sense. Uh, you were in, he was in there less than nine hours and that would be considered a females. Yeah. Um, no, was not going to have no rights to that. Not unless it was part of uh, I, I, I can't speculate on that. It, make that make sense is where I'm at. So this is like, these are basically red flags that we're pointing out here that just don't make sense. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, this one. Is okay. So th this, this one, and then this is another one. Okay. And then, um, it, the sheet is very long, I just want to say. So this is the vent that they're saying it was hung off of. And I did a close-up of that vent, and it's only tied on one of the loops, and uh, there's extra fabric okay. hanging out. If, if you want to see a close-up, you can go to Victoria. Bristow one on my TikTok, and mm -hmm. I have it. I have it blown up on there for you to see. And so, here is. I want to show this one more time because all this, these are photos. So I want people just to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you see it right there, right? 
yeah. just laying there, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, make this make sense. Um, yeah. So, um, and I'm speculating, but the one I showed you where the sheet was laying on the desk, it doesn't look tied to me. Right. It didn't. Did, did you see that? No. I, I mean, I didn't see it tied. It didn't look tied. Uh, so, um, yeah, th there it is. I mean, mm -hmm. so where, where'd this come from? Wow. Uh, I'm not understanding. And then, um, so everybody's seeing that, right? Seeing the color mm -hmm. of that sheet. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Now, it looks orange in this picture. And it looks, what is this, brown or burgundy in the other? Okay. That's weird. Uh, yeah, so those are the pictures of the actual. Um, the item they're alleging. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I just, I can't make sense of the whole thing. And then the sheet itself is, it is so long. That's my sign was six foot. Right. That was my next question is the sheet looks really long and there's it, a it absolutely it because I took both of these pictures and put them together. Mm -hmm. So there you are. And then with there being a desk right there without without trying to be too graphic, but with being realistic, um, if somebody were to try to unalive their self, I would assume they they would get fearful immediately and struggle and try to yes. get Yes, and you know why? And you know why? It's because your body goes into um, into a defense mechanism to save itself. Right. So you're you're going to do this, and you're going to do whatever it takes to stop. Mm -hmm. So there was no none of this on him, none of it. And the desk, once again, is right there. Yeah. And then the maxi pad, and it's the maxi pads are completely around the toilet with one stuck on the back. Mix. And then um, in my videos on TikTok, mm -hmm. this wall right here, if you want to know what's written on that wall, there is something written on that, that wall and it's not my son's handwriting. Do you mind sharing what it says or is that something that's... Uh... Um, it just, what, and I didn't find it till uh, it took, like I said, I've been dissecting it mm -hmm. and it says, it says lost black souls. And then it says souls again, and it's got six, six written everywhere. Wow. And then at the bottom is an eyeball, like a mm -hmm. real artist's eyeball. It's not my son's handwriting. He, it's wrote in cursive and he never wrote in cursive. Okay. All of these things together makes it even more unbelievable than it already sounded the first time we spoke. Uh, That's just the picture. So we got those out of the way. Okay. Um, so now is the do actual documentation that I want to go into. So the documentation that I have, um, it's been seven months. I have no video evidence. I've not been able to look at any video evidence at all. Mm -hmm. And I do have a lawyer. So I got a, I got the lawyer. Uh, it was either the day or it was either the one day or two days after Malcolm had passed. I retained a lawyer. So the excuse of anything not being preserved is not there because I had a lawyer. Okay. So that's out of question. Um, so it's been seven months okay. and I want to just go over some of the documentation. So the, um, correctionals timeline to me is a little off. I'll just say that it, 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 it doesn't make sense to me. And then, um, the one documentation that I have that stands out the most to me is the medics, the medics that arrived on scene 
their documentation and what they said. So I want to go over that. Okay. Let me get to it. Everyone watching would really like um, everyone's input and just listen to this information that Vicki has and everything that doesn't make sense. And if anyone knows uh, some resources she can reach out to um, or that can help walk her through some things that she might need, um, please feel free to say so in the comment section. Yeah, uh, please. If you if there's a medical examiner out there, um, I will turn the flash drive over to them and let them look at all the documentation and give me your opinion mm -hmm. on what you think I'm looking at. Yeah. Okay. So the documentation that I want to talk about is from the medics. There was three medics that showed up that night. The timeline that they showed up, they say that they uh, were in, in the cell by 9.54. They called Malcolm's death by 9.56. Oh, wow. Two minutes. Now, left. in the timeline, it says that he Malcolm was found by 9.47. Okay. Okay. So the medic showed up, 9.54. 956 they called him. So the paramedics say that from the time the call went out to them till mm -hmm. they got there was only 12 minutes. That's very important. Only 12 minutes, okay? All right. Now, on their um on their report it says um injury and under injury, and this is what the medics wrote, under injury, it says suffocation, asphyxiation, hanging as cause of asphyxiation slash police slash jail, and then the date he passed. That to me sounds like somebody has placed something over your mouth when I hear suffocation. So m my opinion mm -hmm. is, uh, my opinion is mm -hmm. if it, why did the coroner, when he called asphyxiation hanging suicide, why did he not put down suffocation? He didn't. So there's a discrepancy there for sure. There's it's another one of those make it make sense. You right. have, it, you have paramedics report injury. It says injury, suffocation, asphyxiation, hanging as cause of asphyxiation, slash police, slash jail, 11-5-2021. So now they wrote, um, they wrote a report, mm -hmm. okay? So in their report. The medics wrote this, right? The, the medics, the lead medic that showed up on scene wrote, this is his report, and he wrote a report. And in his report, there was three of them, but he was the lead that wrote this. In his report, he wrote three, it says, medic three dispatched to the jail for a report of an attempted suicide by hanging. No further information was provided to us at this time. Upon our arrival, we were directed to, I can't say that, um, the patient um, was located, I'm not going to say that neither, uh, officers were providing CPR compressions only to a patient was a 21-year-old male who was found hanging from a blanket in his cell. I says, by officers 12 minutes prior to our arrival at 9.44. The last known, the last known well of the patient was unknown. We were unable to get an accurate time frame of when the patient was last seen prior to the incident. CPR was seized to check for pulse and breathing. The patient was aspirated and pulseless. No, no AED was uh, present for the patient upon arrival. The patient had dilated and fixed pupils. The patient's airway was open manually and offset rigor mortis was set in his neck. 
I'm just a regular person, but that to me sounds like they're saying that rigor mortis was already set in. This is what the paramedics are saying, that they seen uh, offset rigor mortis set in his neck. I'm in the med field. Oh. So I know firsthand mm -hmm. how long that a person after they pass that rigor mortis sets in. Okay. Is it just guesstimating in your opinion? Two to three hours after passing, rigor mortis starts to set in the body. Okay. Well, that's a big difference in time there than what they put in this document. Hold on, I got another one for you. Okay. Based on initial findings of our unit, patient was down for a prolonged period of time prior to being found but um the first co that was doing the head count and said that he uh found malcolm said that he thought he would heard gasping because he said when he when he looked in said hey are you okay man he said he was standing weird up against that wall and he said when he went in that he heard him, Malcolm gasping and um, stuck his hand in the sheet like mm -hmm. this and waited for other people to come and help to get the, it off of his neck is what his statement is. Mm -hmm. So the paramedic's statement does not align with what the COs are saying. Right. And so something that came to mind when you just said that in the picture, I noticed that it looks like the sheet was intact, like still in a circle. So they was the hole large enough that they could just pull it off of him. They didn't have to cut it off. No, they didn't. And that's what they're saying. No. And, and if you notice another thing that I have that is so disturbing to me, Mm -hmm. is okay so this is a picture of my son right yes so that's his neck yeah you see it mm -hmm. uh it, what is that like you could what you could fit three that looks uh, pretty large compared to the photo you showed us of your son i don't know yeah i have questions about that too you know and yeah. that's just me speculating right so you know that's me speculating mm -hmm. on it so the medics um report really disturbed me i must say mm -hmm. um you were there 12 within 12 minutes the the rigor more set in his neck how how yeah. how is that possible right explain that how is that possible we because because if you are not in the med field, you can Google. You can Google what I'm talking about. It's going to tell you two to six hours mm -hmm. after a person has passed, rigor mortis starts setting in their body. Okay. Okay. Another thing, I, I when you were reading the medical uh, report, I heard that they it mentioned they did chest compressions, but why was no aid given to give him any any breaths if his airway was open they said okay so okay so this is with the first co mm -hmm. he says that they get him down they start chest compressions and that the um the nurse comes in she hooks him up to the vital machine he has an oxygen level of 54 percent and he has a heartbeat then she administers multiple, multiple, many syringes of Narcan. Narcan? Now, isn't that what's used for an overdose? Exactly. She didn't do, she, she used multiple. It's in the report. It's in all the reports from the CO to the corner that showed up. I mean, I have pictures of it. I have actual pictures of the syringes. And what I'm looking at 
um, are the ones that go up the nose. Yes. But, but, he knows. Okay. but it's, you can see it in his mouth. Used as to why she would administer Narcan if he was found hanging. On the coroner's report, the one that came to the Ross County Jail, the corner from Ross County, mm -hmm. because Malcolm's uh, autopsy was done in Montgomery County, which is Dayton. Okay. So on the coroner's report from Ross County, he says the jail told him the last time they seen uh, uh, Malcolm was at 430. So they're saying they saw him alive and well at 430. Correct. Okay, so he made a phone call to one of his kids' moms at 420. Mm -hmm. He made a phone call to me. It was either 430 or 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then he made another phone call at 730. Now, the phones are not inside the cells. The phones are inside the pods where the cameras are. Okay. So there are cameras in the pod area. Yes. Okay. And you have you been given any any footage of any of that? No. None. 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 And it's been seven months. No footage at all. And I'm asking for every second that he's been in there. Absolutely. Every second. They're not just going to give me body cam and expect me to be okay with it because right. I'm not. I yeah. want every second from the time he stepped in. You, I, as his mother, I, I believe you have every right to have footage from the cameras that were in the pod area as well as body cam. So you can put those together and see for yourself. Your attorney look at those things. I would want to piece all of that together as well, just like you're doing right now with all of these uh, strange findings and, and conflicting reports. You know, I can see that you've really gone into warrior mom mode and you're, you're, you're going to get answers. You're not just going to be handed a, oh, this is what it was, accept it and deal with it. You know, it's not making sense. It's not making sense. And then I moved to, then I moved from the documentation to the actual pictures mm -hmm. of him. And he's got old, he's got old marks and new marks on him. He's okay. marked up from head to toe. Can you explain what some of those marks look like to you? Um, so he's got a mark on the right side, which is right here, and it's a huge indent with like this red circular, I can't describe the pattern, but it's right here on the right side. Mm -hmm. Then he has, he had a tattoo and it says, said MOOK, M-O-O-K. So the second O has a huge gash in it. It's a gash. The actual gash, okay. Yeah, and then... Um, Let's talk about his lip. So what I'm looking at, and I have actual facts, an mm -hmm. actual photo of it, mm -hmm. so I can speak about it. Right. He has a bruise on this side, a gash on this side, and then a red line, like a gash, red line, all the way through the bottom of his lips. Why? Yeah, why? Especially if it was documented that they did not give him any breaths. They were doing CPR mm -hmm. and they had a, a, a manual, like the, the kind oh. of face mask you put over them, but it's for when you breathe, when you're doing CPR, because okay. you don't want to touch their lips. Yes. So, yeah, so um, mm -hmm. that's what that is. And, and mm -hmm. I've used one of those and that doesn't cause your lips to look that way. That's just my opinion. Okay. But he clearly has a bruise on his upper lip. And mm -hmm. like, you know how when your uh, lips get chapped and then they, they crack? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like beside the bruise is a crack. And then he has a red line all the way across his bottom lip. 
on the outside or the inner lip? On the, uh, like the bottom. Uh, oh, okay, the outside. Yeah, it's got brown stuff on the, each corner of his mouth. Hmm. His left arm has, a, his left arm has a, a, a little gas and then right here has, it's bulged out. That's his left arm. Okay. And then on the back of his shoulder, which is an old mark, it came from, uh, which it's an old mark. I'm mm -hmm. just going to say that because he came from Columbus, then he went to Ross County. It's right. a huge gash, this big, mm -hmm. huge gash, this big, mm -hmm. on his shoulder. Then down the middle of his back, all the way down to the bottom of his spine, in the middle, is a huge circular indent in his back. I, I don't know what it's from. Um, they gave me no information. The coroner just documented it. He didn't say where it came from at all. And then on the left side of his, this whole area right here mm -hmm. is like um, from back here up is like, it's like, like, it's like welts, like little tiny scratch welts with mm -hmm. bruising. And his whole ear is bruised, behind it is bruised, and all the way to the jawline. That's what they're calling the uh, ligature marks. But not one time does any of the pictures have, like, it doesn't show, in my opinion, right. it does not show an actual circular of uh, a sheet. Right. Doesn't show this at all. Right. And you would, with the way they are saying this is how he was found, allegedly, you would expect to see that around the neck. And yeah. Later. I can say too that, you know, when you're passing, mm -hmm. your, um, you know how your blood rises to the surface? Yes. So what I'm looking at, it's only the bottom half that it did that on. Because I don't see it at the top half of the back. Okay. I only see it at the bottom. I've seen that, um, you know, I, I was with a relative when they passed and I've seen that take place. So I know what you're talking about, that marking that begins to set in where the blood settles after passing. And that's strange, the way you explain that. Um, so what did you see? Was it the, it's supposed, he passed on, they're saying he passed on his back. Referring to my grandfather and uh, when he passed, he was lying down and it was the entirety of his back and legs uh, because the blood settles into that area where you, where your body weight has, had been lying. And it was evenly discolored in my opinion. What I'm seeing is it's, it's the, it's the entire butt off all the way down the back of his leg all the way down to the bottoms of his feet but the back area itself i'm not seeing that so in the coroner's report for ross county it said that it documented what he had so he had on a green and white jumpsuit he had on a pair of white breech he had on a pair of socks and he had on a pair of orange shower shoes. That is what Ross County documented. Okay. So when he got to Montgomery County, mm -hmm. that corner documented that he had on a green and white jumpsuit, white briefs, and two orange shower shoes. So when I got all of his clothing, mm -hmm. his socks are missing. And I can say that because I did not receive them. And nor was it documented in Montgomery County by the, by the corner. Right. So his socks are missing. Why? Yeah. And that wouldn't make any sense to keep them for evidence because they weren't used as a method of uh, the alleged unaliving, you know, like obviously they're going to keep the sheet. Montgomery County, Montgomery County was the one doing the, doing the investigation. He never received, he never documented the socks. So therefore, 
The mm -hmm. socks were not there for him to document. Why so did the corner why did the corner document and then the Montgomery County did not document it? And when my when my son went into the body bag, mm -hmm. there was a tag put on it. Because as soon as he went into that body bag, there's a seal on it because he everything him and everything he had on him was part of an investigation. That's Montgomery yeah. County. Mm -hmm. So why did that corner and Montgomery County not document themselves? Right. And for anyone thinking like this is so oh, socks, that's so minor. No, when it's an investigation and a suspicious death at that, every item should be intact. And I think anybody would want that for their loved one. Everything to be looked at. Absolutely. Every item mattered. Every item that Malcolm had on him was part of an investigation. When I called the coroner, I did call him myself. Uh, no, I emailed him. He said that he sent it. He don't know what happened to it. And that I needed to get hold of Montgomery County um, uh, corner, but the Montgomery County corner will not uh, talk to me at all. Okay. So they refused to speak. I'm curious also, you mentioned that his left arm was kind of bowed or uh, disfigured. Did you get any more funeral information home? on why? Yeah, or, the funeral home. Uh, did they just not? The only time him? I got to view my nope. and it's not in the after they had me, but it's in the picture because he there's like a burn here and then there's a mark, like a gash right yeah. here on his uh, elbow. Mm -hmm. And the pictures are there, but the, it's not in the autopsy. And then on his, um, I think it's his left knee, right uh -huh. down from the knee are two gashes that he did document. And then the long, the long, there was a long welt with two scratches on his forehead. I remember being on one of your lives and you had shown a picture and I noticed that uh, there was a mark on his forehead. I have and, I have the pictures myself yeah. that yeah. well across his forehead. How soon after being notified did they allow you to see him and you take those photos? See, that's the thing. The um, and I'm also questioning this, this too. The funeral home that I sent Malcolm to would not allow me to view his body at all. Not at all. They had makeup on him and he was dressed. So if I was who I am now, mm -hmm. they would have not gotten away with that. But um, when my son passed, it, I, it, it was overwhelming for me. Mm -hmm. uh, my mind broke. Like, and then I had to keep it together and have him uh, have his funeral. And I, I just was going through a lot to where I couldn't handle but if I was now, I wouldn't have let them got by with it. Of course. I've never heard of a funeral home denying a, a mother seeing access to the body. Right. They're a third party. They're not part of the jail or they're not supposed to be, um, you know, or I, I actually have a cousin who works in a funeral home. And I'm going to ask her about that. You know, has she ever heard of something like that? because it doesn't yeah and when, um i viewed malcolm's body the, the day before we had his funeral mm -hmm. his left arm was huge and his neck was out here his neck was huge i'm like why what is going on like mm -hmm. why is my son's neck so huge mm -hmm. my son was he was he was tall and lengthy yeah he was tall his neck was like my neck it was mm -hmm. out to here and his left arm, my initial thought was, and the first thing that came out my mouth was, why does it look like my son's arm is broke? And I said this to the funeral director and he said, I don't know, it could be broke or it could be fluid. And I said, really? He's been embalmed. That's uh, insulting to even be told it could be, you know? These things should have been answered for you clearly. 
and I feel like you're definitely picking up on a problem. You're being given information that is so contradicting each and everything that you brought up are pieces of a puzzle that just doesn't fit. It doesn't, it's their own evidence. It's their own evidence and it does not make sense. Right. It doesn't. Right. And I hate, I hate, you know, I hate to say that, but I mean, in my, my opinion, and this is my opinion, mm -hmm. what I'm looking at does not make sense. Right. And all of these things, yeah, all of these things added together just seem so odd, even right down to the maxi pads being placed on the toilet. Like, what, what is that all about? What is that all about? Why was there maxi pads in a male's cell? Right. Now, mind you, you're in jail. You don't get the freedom to do whatever you want. Right. So that would be for the females, and they're not just handing them out to males. I was just going to say that, and even from what I understand and speaking to females who have been incarcerated, you're not just given a handful of, you know, feminine hygiene products. You're, you're those are holes. You right. literally have them all the way around the toilet. And then there's one taped up like this on the back. Yeah. The whole scene that's been explained. And then what I've seen just in the pictures you've shown, in my opinion, looks like it's been disrupted. It doesn't look right. It doesn't make sense. The length of the sheet, the knot being appeared in the second picture, the desk being that close to the, the vent, like no marks on the front of his neck where you would expect to see uh, signs of a struggle to grab the hold, you know? Yeah, you... Yeah, I uh, I hate that you're going through this, and it's been seven months, and you haven't gotten any clear cut answers that make sense. You know, if you would have been given something that made sense, I'm no, I I know you would have accepted it. This does not make sense. So, you being on a mission to get the truth. And fighting for that, I respect that 100%, and I'm on board with you. I hope that anyone that watches this who has any knowledge, I mean, it could even be somebody who has lost a loved one in another similar way or alleged way, or if anyone has any type of information that could help Vicki just needs to look at it other than their own county. Okay, so another thing that I'm now um, tracking down, mm -hmm. there needs to be an so, outside investigation done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have some things that I can't talk about that I'm in the works of doing. Okay. Um, I'm Malcolm's warrior. Mm -hmm. And I'm not out to make anyone look bad or to, you know, go after mm -hmm. people. I, you know, if my son unalived himself, mm -hmm. then I have to acknowledge that and deal with that. Right. I have their own evidence and it makes me sit clueless mm -hmm. when I look at a report of medics contradicting what they say. Right. And I, it's clear to me hearing you speak, you're not out to get anybody because you've protected the names. And I know that they have to be shown in the report that you're reading. You haven't tried to expose, you know, every individual involved. You're just asking for answers. I want justice to be served properly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. And I think that's what any of us would want. That's completely understandable. And especially coming from your Malcolm's warrior, but also just from what I've been told and what I've looked into, this county has a lot of really shady things that have happened. A lot. Yeah. 
a lot. And you know what? Uh, the last couple days, so uh, Circleville is 25 minutes uh, from uh, from Chillicothe, and Circleville is one of the surrounding counties around Chillicothe, and they ha actually have the BCI FBI now investigating the Circleville police for um, antagonizing and harassing black people. The feds are looking at the entire police force and it's starting with the police chief. And this is a county that is 25 minutes from Chillicothe. It is part, it's considered part of the surrounding areas of Chillicothe. And, um, you know, people need to understand that sundown towns are not talked about, but they still do exist. They still exist. And it's, unless you have a, a loved one or you happen to be someone that has to live that truth and live with those fears, I don't think people think. It, it, that is very much, that is very much real. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, if that's, if there's an investigation just 25 miles from you uh, or where this took place, then it's it's everywhere you know what i mean and people need to be aware of that and speak out yeah and the countless people that are missing from chillicothe um there's been uh there's been after malcolm mm -hmm. i think about a month maybe two months uh the bodies started dropping in the streets they if i'm not mistaken i think they found three or four three to five people that were unalived um, that they found a, a woman that had been missing for several months. Mm -hmm. They found her on the property of a retired detective from Ross County. And they're saying that she uh, committed suicide and he had, I guess, 19 acres and there was like a little campsite or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's where they found her. And now they have a, a woman and her one-year-old child missing. And they went missing Memorial Weekend. Maybe something bad is going on there. In Chillicothe, something bad is going on there. You cannot have so many people that are being found unalive in the streets and in the jail. And then there's nothing going on. Right. Yeah, you had said that even our first time speaking. Something is going on. So I did start following some of the, the news stories coming out of that county. And every time something new would come out about, you know, somebody's death or missing, I would just be like, this is too much. This does not, something's wrong. Like you said, something's wrong. Something is wrong. I don't understand why the BCI and the FBI won't step in. Now I know that protocol is someone higher up has to ask them to step in, but why does it have to be someone higher up? Why can it not be a community to say, Hey, something bad is going on here. We need answers. We need help. Why does it have to be someone higher up? Like, I don't understand because the people higher up do not have the community's back. Well, too, not only is it people being found unalive, mm -hmm. but now they have a problem with arson. You can look that up. It, it's bad. Now it's it's both. Now it's that, the jail, and then now arson. Um, there was a story where there was a house that was uh, burned up and uh, a little boy and his aunt died. It sounds like a and lot of arson. people. Yeah. That's just crazy. This is, Chillicothe is not a big city. Chillicothe is a town. So it's, how many people do you think? I mean, we could Google it, but, or from. Or um, I'm not sure I would have to. I'm yeah, telling you, um, you could get through that whole town in less than an hour. Oh the God. whole town. Like, it's not a big city. It what has big that? city crime inside of a little town. Can you think of anything uh, that you would like people to reach out and do or say? Um, I just, you know, what I'm looking at, if there's any 
anybody that knows anybody that has expertise in what I'm looking at, um, I would love to get an outside person that has that this is in their field and really let them look at this the evidence that I have and pick their brain. Because um, what I'm looking at, the corners did not make it make sense. No one did. So I want someone that can help me. You know, it's cost me $8,000 to get a, a medical examiner outside to look at it. I'm sorry. I don't have $8,000. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop. Right. Right. And that's one thing I've... I've learned from from getting to know you is you're not going to stop you're not going to just take no no answer. no i'm not a dog that just lays down right no no right. my son's life mattered to me right. and to his family and to his babies right so i want to make sure that when his children get older they have the complete truth of what happened to their daddy because not only are they growing up without their daddy, mm -hmm. but then on top of that, I need to know 100% before this is presented to them that he did this to himself. Because not only is they gonna have problems with him not being there, mm -hmm. but then you gotta tell them that he unalived himself as well. I think that it's only fair, you know what I mean? To, to get all of that information. And you're right, you're thinking about the whole picture you're thinking about your grandbabies and they deserve to make sure that they receive the honest to god absolute facts about what happened to their dad yes yes and i collect i will be continuing to collect evidence and this will go once i'm it's done it will go into a vault and when the babies are old enough and mature enough and they want to, I will pull everything out if they want it and allow them to see it. But I need the complete truth of what really happened and what I'm looking at. And I'm, I've been in the med field for many years. I'm not saying I'm a doctor. I'm not saying I'm a coroner. But what I'm saying is what I'm looking at does not make sense to me. Yeah. And if it doesn't make sense, then something's wrong. Yeah, something is wrong. For sure. You know, I would like for everyone that's watching to understand, and it it's sad that we even have to say this, but I think it's important because some people are just not aware of what it's like to have someone, a family member that has been incarcerated or even something as small as your son was in on, a, I think, a traffic violation, right? It was like nothing. 30 days. Yeah, it was a 30 day sentence for mm -hmm. OVI. He wasn't yeah. violent. He wasn't violent. It, it, he was none of that. He was a sweet yeah. young man and everybody loved him, my son. Mm -hmm. Everybody. He was loved. That's by something. Many. Right. So, it, you know, people that are watching, under, please understand, you know, this, this is Vicky's child. You know, he was in there on something so minor that could happen to any of us at any point. So... You know, it shouldn't matter. I hope people don't think, oh, he was in jail. You know, that that could happen. That could no. He was in there for a very minor thing and a, a very minimal amount of time he had to be there. So taking that and then all of these things that Vicky has presented to us today, um, add those things together. I mean, it might seem to some people like that's a whole lot, you know, or it's all over the place, but Think about that. If you add all of these different reports and items and things that don't make sense, imagine how Vicky must feel being that this is about her, her child. It doesn't make sense. And I think that it's only fair that she gets the answers that, that she deserves. So please reach out uh, if anyone has any suggestions, information, if you can help guide her in a you know direction that would be helpful. So if there's anything else you'd like to share, go ahead and um, how about you go ahead and give people your socials one more time, um, your TikToks. I know you're going live now, right? In yeah, uh -huh. um, you can find me on my Facebook. Um, that's where I do a lot of like my communicating. If they want to video chat me or speak with me, I do it on Messenger. So it's uh, Victoria. 
uh, slash Kirk Bristow. That is my um, my Facebook. And then my TikTok is a support page for, um, I advocate for other mothers that ha- are going through what I'm going through. And then it is Malcolm's support page 100%. You'll not ever see anything goofy on there because it is a support page for fighting for justice. So it's Victoria Bristow one. It, well, it's at Victoria Bristow one is my um, TikTok. Right? TikTok. Okay. Okay, you guys got it there, and that's I think that's great with the Facebook thing too. So people can reach out to you directly if they you know have some information. With that said, I just want to thank everyone for watching for listening. I know this is a heavy topic; uh, it's a lot to take in, but understand this is. Um, this is Vicky's reality and what she's living through. So um, let's just support her. And if you guys have information, reach out. So with that said, you guys remember, always keep your hearts convicted. Thank you for watching.